Hey everyone, welcome to the Bonehead Homestead, where I'm just an idiot trying to figure out how to grow food in my own yard. And today, it's time for these fatties to go to freezer camp. Now, I did a video back in the spring, because I did one batch of Cornish Cross, where I actually kept them stationary, not in a tractor like this. So, I kind of want to go through, compare and contrast my experiences with each. Um, I had a reason that I kept them stationary in the last batch, and that was because... I was trying to prep some garden space for next year, and I figured these guys dump a whole bunch of nitrogen where they go. So keep them in one spot with a deep wood chip bedding, and let's see how that garden turns out next year. So I'll follow up with that in the probably summer next year as uh, we try to harvest and grow stuff in that area. But for this batch, you know, I got these at the very tail end of summer, and it's now mid-November. I'm harvesting them, so... I kind of compare and contrast stationary versus mobile in my experiences with each. So there's some different variables. So it's not quite apples to apples. I'll give you that. So I got these from a different hatchery. And this is also a straight run, not all males. It's also in a much colder temperature. Because um, the ones that were stationary, I harvested mid-June. So I'm going to do another video on... Uh, my experience with different times of the years with these, but as far as stationary versus mobile, the pros of keeping them stationary is it's less work. You don't have to move them every day. You do have to bring in some additional bedding as they drop more turds behind them. So there is still some labor involved. You still have to move some stuff, but it's not as labor intensive as moving a tractor every day. The other pro is you can really concentrate where their droppings go. So the cons of keeping them stationary is they do tend to just kind of, eh, I guess, waddle in their own feces. Wallow? Wallow, that's the word. What pigs do. So I feel like they're much dirtier birds by the end. A lot of them actually had bumblefoot, surprisingly. Um, I haven't noticed that on any of the ones I track. So, so that's the pros and cons of keeping them stationary. Pros and cons of mobile. So the pro is... They seem like much cleaner birds. They actually seem kind of healthier to me. Uh, I had much less mortality doing it this way. Now, that could be partly this different hatchery. It was a better stock or it just be the time of the year. This seems like a healthier way to do them. They're on grass. I actually use less feed. Um, I'm going to have to wait till I'm done with these and maybe I'll follow back up with kind of the conversion on the numbers as far as feed conversion because they eat the grass as they go too. And both batches, I wound up, because I have a lot of extra eggs, I'm not set up to sell eggs just yet, and found, friends and family aren't always willing to take it, so I had a bunch of extra eggs, so they both got a lot of eggs in their diet, um, they got some food scraps, uh, you know, I had some old stuff in the freezer, meat-wise, that I would uh, just give to them. Stationary versus mobile. If I had my preference, I kind of like these more, um. The stationary ones, you know, as far as flavor of the meat and texture, I didn't notice the difference. It's still a very good tasting bird, even if they weren't on grass. But just looking at these, these ones seem a lot healthier. So, so will I raise Cornish Cross stationary again? Possibly. If I'm trying to set up another garden area or I need one spot that needs a whole lot of uh, fertility added to it, I might. But I think for the most part, tractoring is how I'm going to do it. Especially since I build this brooder and tractor in one i did a video on that a little while ago but eh. anyways i'm going to cut in video now of when the final numbers after these little fatties are in the freezer so here i am the next day uh i don't know what order i'm going to release these videos in but this kind of is the same result uh, as the last video i did on hot versus cold weather and then i'm doing one on stationary versus not stationary because they're the same batches so not the most scientific comparison, it's just the data I have. It's anecdotal, but hopefully it might give you all some uh, ideas on when and how to do things. So the birds I did stationary, which I had much higher mortality with those. It was summer, but I still used a lot more feed with those because the ones that are in the tractor, they're getting grass. They eat grass all the time. Uh, Definitely figured it out, especially once you take their feet away for the last day and all they have is a grass. They have, you know, crops full of grass by the time I get to the last ones. But anyway, so the ones that were stationary back in the summer, I had a 3.44 pounds of feed 
conversion. So it took 3.44 pounds of feed for every pound of meat I got out of them. Now, I had a 20% mortality with those. So probably a lot of that was the heat. I don't know. And those were straight in the mail run. The other batch I did that was in a tractor was a straight run. So there were hens mixed in there. Or, yeah, pullets, whatever female broilers are called. Those things, yeah. But, so anyways, when they were stationary, it was 3.44 pounds feed conversion. Got my numbers here. They averaged 6.3 pounds, the ones that made it all the way to the butcher day. And I used 448 pounds of feed to get them there. It cost me $1.87 a pound to raise those. And that's just, that's the feed, that's the bedding for the brooder, that's the ice for, I don't have to buy much ice, I make most of it for uh, when I have to cool them down, but if you're going to process them in the summer, it's going to take more ice unless you can move your cooler somewhere air conditioned, which most of us won't. So it takes more ice to cool them down. But all that went into that calculation of 187 and the bags to put them in, the shrink bags. So the ones I did in the tractor, it was a 2.48 pounds feed conversion. So I actually gave them less feed because they were on the grass. And the ones that made it all the way to eight weeks butcher day averaged 6.2 pounds. So about the same weight as the ones that got even more feed but didn't have the grass. So it cost me $1.65 a pound to do, which you know, it was a straight run, so that's cheaper than buying all males. But also went through way less feed. So that's definitely something to consider when you're thinking of stationary versus mobile. If you can get them out on grass, they eat grass, the grass helps them grow. But now that I've done both, what am I going to do moving forward? Probably 99% of the time I'm going to tractor them, um, unless I get to a point where... Like, we're going to plan a vacation while I have broilers, which I really try not to, but that just makes it easier on whoever's a chicken setting for us if they're stationary, you know, not expecting anyone in my family to move the tractor. And, like I said, the flavor, the texture, I didn't notice much of a difference. And it's still way better than anything you get in the Purdue or Tyson house or anything you get at the store. So, yeah. So there's numbers on stationary versus uh, mobile and tractors. So, anyways, please subscribe. I'm trying to make videos here a thing. Try to do it more often. So, uh, yeah, just stick around. See what happens. Cheers.